Like I always say, it is yet another cloudy day here in Garoka. I'm gonna be taking you guys to a place I haven't been to in a couple years, actually two full years at least, and it's gonna be very slippery. Um, I got a text earlier saying that the weather's nice out there. It's clear enough in the valley to get in, but they had rain last night and it's gonna be very slippery. Thankfully, I am empty today. That will help being able to stop, but this is one place that I have been very concerned about sliding off the end of the runway one time. It's an hour flight out there. It should be absolutely perfect weather all the way out there all day long. So let's get going. This video has been sponsored by Surfshark. Clouds are clearing down there, enough for me to get out of here via far. We're basically just waiting for the clouds to get up, but there's a hole down there, so we should be able to squeeze right through because I am empty today. So let's jump in, get going on an hour flight. All right, as long as that hole right there doesn't close in on me, I should be good to get out of here marginal via far. All right. All of our parameters are coming in nice and slow today as normal on the first start. Our fuel caps and selectors are good. Our controls are good. We're going up to 12,000 today on this flight. And let's put our flight plan in. Garoka to MT. Alamunda. Garoka Tower, November Tango Kilo. Request taxi Malamunda, 1 POV. Good morning. Taxi to runway one turn left at the black track and line up. Wind is light and variable QNH 1023. Time check 06. 1023, clear to back track line up one seven left. November Tango Kilo. But once we get out of this area right here, I'm expecting to be a really nice flight all the way out there according to the weather. It doesn't really show anything on the radar at all. Ignition and lights are done. Harnesses are locked. I idle is done. We're just waiting on takeoff for clearance. You guys don't know what this is. It's called a buddy check. It's your critical items for takeoff and landing. It's tactile, so it's really nice. You can kind of bounce around. You can get them customized to say whatever you like. You've got eight switches. And coming up soon, you can't really see it, but there you can just kind of see there'll be red lights behind and they flip off as you go. That's coming on the next batch of them. November Tango, Kilo ready for departure. November Tango, Kilo, runway, one turn left. Right turn, clear the off. One turn left, right turn, clip takeoff, November Tango, Kilo. 1390. Airspeed's alive. There's 720 in the ITT. There's rotate. Now pitch on up to around 11 degrees and get out of here via VFR, which is about 73 knots, or VX. Up, up right through this hole. There we go. Too easy. Our ITT should just start continually dropping on down. I'm going to let it sit for about 30 seconds and then we'll readjust to 720 for our climb out of here. Feet. Yeah, I haven't even adjusted the ITT yet and it's at 721, so. Oh, no, 722. So we'll just adjust that right at 720. Now that we are heading in the right direction, let's do heading mode on the autopilot and I'm going to go ahead and trim it out for. About 100 to 105 knots right around in there so the autopilot can continue on doing its thing. All the way up to 12,000 and while we're in a climb, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. And what a VPN is, is it's an app that would go on your computer, your phone, any device really, 
and it's keeping your identity safe while you're online by encrypting the data sent from your device to the internet. If you're thinking, well, I don't really go on to hotspots and Wi-Fi things, there's a lot of other great ways that you can use a VPN. A few that I personally use is, while living in another country other than the United States, I'm unable to access Pandora, a music streaming platform that I like, it's basically just like an online radio. But here in Papua New Guinea, I actually have to change my location back to America to be able to unlock Pandora so that I can listen to the radio. And I know a lot of my viewers are from all around the world, so you guys would have access to Pandora as well. Now, if you're thinking, well, I'm not outside of the United States, there are other ways that you can utilize a VPN. One of the other big ones that I use personally here is for Netflix. I can unlock all of Netflix's worldwide streaming libraries. So I'm not just limited to the Australian library, which I'm closest to, so that's what I have available. I can change my location back to America. If I'm looking for a specific movie, what I would do is just go online, look for that movie, find out which country it's available in, and then just change my location to, let's say, the UK, Japan, over to America, so that I can have availability to that movie within the full Netflix streaming library. We're about a thousand feet yet to go, so let's go ahead and hit vertical speed and altitude select on my autopilot to get it leveling off. Now, one of the reasons why I've actually gone with Surfshark, and I've actually paid for their service for years, even though they have been a sponsor of this channel, is because I can do multiple devices on one account. I'm not having to pay for multiple accounts. We've got a family of five, we've got a ton of devices, and I can put as many devices on that one account as I want and log into all of them. Makes my life so much easier and only one subscription to pay for. So give Surfshark a try today. Sign up with the link down below. Use my code, get yourself an extra four free months. And the great thing about Surfshark is they offer 30 day money back guaranteed. So there's no risk to try it out. I thought it might be interesting to go over my weight and balance on being able to get out of this mountain airstrip here with my passengers. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is our DFR, our daily flight record. See what our passengers have scheduled for their weight. Looks like 550 kgs. So if we head over to the weight and balance tab, we've got up here, and then we're gonna switch to the Malamunda back to Garoka. I should be getting out of there with 768 pounds of fuel. So this does all the calculations for us. We can switch between kgs and pounds over here. I know everybody's really confused and very concerned for me that I'm gonna get it messed up before, but you can't get it messed up because it's just a number and you're only dealing with all your weights and kgs. You're only dealing with your fuel in pounds. Like it's just a number that you're typing in and it knows whatever number that is, is the number you want. So we've got 550 kg. So if we did 550 and there's five of them in this family, it comes out to be 110 a piece. I know they're not 110 a piece. So let's just assume that each one of them is gonna be 85 kgs each. Some are more, some are less. So let's times that by five. It's 425. That's 200 feet to go to 12,000. So it's gonna start leveling me off. So if I know I have 425 and I've got five of them, let's split the load up and put 425 for the passengers. I've got one extra seat. I always like to bring an extra one, preferably two, in case there's a medevac or someone I need to pick up that's sick or something like that, I can throw them on without having to worry too much. So we said we had 550 minus the 425 leaves us with 125 kgs left. If we throw that in the front pod, we should be able to fit that much in there. You can see down here, my weight and balance, if I click on that, it brings it open. I've got takeoff limit as the yellow line. That is our takeoff limit for Malamunda. It has, I believe, 175 kg penalty getting out of there under max gross. So we can't actually fill up the Kodiak fully at some of these locations. RZD 1201, November Tango Kilo transfer. November Tango Kilo, good morning, what should we get? Good morning, November Tango Kilo, one five miles to the west of Goroka, maintaining one two thousand, estimating overhead Compium four six. 
I'm a tengo kilo, number one two thousand, RQNH one zero one one. And request your estimate a beam mountain again. Should be north of beam time three five about over nine kilo and I'll be remaining with CTA. I'm a tengo kilo. Traffic is kilo zero Oscar to not have the three arriva for Montagian. Maintaining one three thousand at gear two 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 eight. Again, two two five four one zero left and right of track. Limiting one zero left and right of track. Copy traffic now the Pranculo. Number kilo time three five colon one two eight decimal five. Secondary six five three. One two eight five six five three eight time three five no vermiculo. Now, if you are a flight simmer and you would like to learn how to fly the Kodiak, I've got something for you. I've got a Kodiak sim course. It's all online, a few hours long, going over how to fly the Kodiak, how to start it, how to shut it down, um, how to take off, how to set up for cruise, how to set up for climb all these different engine parameters, how to use the G1000 if you've never actually used a G1000, if you're just into steam gauges, that's what I learned on. Oh, learning how to transition over to a glass cockpit, how to even fly some instrument approaches using the G1000 as well. So if you guys are interested in something like that or you want to learn how to fly, you don't know how, but you think it'd be pretty cool, then definitely check out the first link down below. I know you guys will really enjoy this course I've made for you guys. Just about approaching our time, 3-5 now. We're just staying outside of all of um, our Hawkins airspace, just so I don't have to switch over to them. It's just a little bit easier just to go a mile off track. Looking ahead, it looks pretty scuzzy out there, to be honest. This isn't really what I was expecting. This time of year when like the windy forecast is saying that it's just like perfectly clear, for some reason it just can't seem to pick up like these low clouds. Or other times of year it does, so I don't know. I'm confused. We'll figure out a way to get there. I always do. They said it was a nice day out there, and it said that it was clear in their little tiny valley with a high overcast of like 11,000 feet. So I'm just going to keep tra <laughs> tracking along and hope for the best. Morsby, 1285, November Tango Kilo Transfer. No, I'm Tango Kilo, Muscle Guard. Morning, November Tango Kilo, north of Beam Hog, and this time remaining OCTA, maintaining 1 2000, estimating overhead Compium 48, Alamanda 07. Okay, November Tango Kilo, morning, not above 1000, traffic, Mike Echo Whiskey, Assistant Caravan, texting Hagen for RAM, 8000 on departure. Copy, Mike Echo Whiskey, November Tango Kilo. Touchdown zone is 2,200 feet, so I'm going to put in 3,200 feet for my pattern altitude. Looking ahead, we do have some clouds, it's kind of down low. I'm going to plan on 1,000 feet per minute on my descent. We'll put a top of descent mark way up there, not too far from it. That way I can just hold my altitude, get over any low-lining clouds, and then just drop down into the valley that I'm hoping is clear. If you guys missed one of my latest videos, I flew over the landslide that everybody's been asking me about just this week and made a video. So go check out my channel, just click on videos, and it should be just a couple before this one probably. If you guys are interested in seeing it firsthand from what it looks like, I flew directly right over top of it. So I had literally hundreds of people asking me about it. And we just didn't have any flights going out that way, but this particular day was directly over top of it, which worked out really well. All right, there's my traffic. Wait, no, Kilo Sierra Oscar. Kilo Sierra Oscar, 6538, over November Tango Kilo, difficulty 4. Good, uh, we're maintaining uh, 1 3000, currently 2 2 miles uh, north of uh, Hagen, inbound by the bar. Alright, we'll be passing about 3 miles, currently maintaining 1 2000, November Tango Kilo. Kilo to Roscoe. I'm just going to flip on my lights just so he can see me potentially. Oh, there he is. 
Kilo Zero, Oscar, I've got you on site. Just pass it in now. See you again, uh, Kilo Zero, Oscar. I'm just passing underneath you now. Have a good day. Uh, started. Likewise, Kilo Zero, Oscar. Out of all the skies, <laughs> we directly cross paths. That's why it is important to be listening up for your traffic and actually knowing where they are. Let's see. We're just about approaching Compium. We're going to give Moresby a call. Let's go over a strip chart for when we get there. Here, Malamunda. Caution, slippery when wet. Yes, it is. Very slippery. Like I said earlier, this is probably the only place that I've ever thought in my mind. I might slide off the end of it today at the top. And it's a hill, too. I mean, it's only 4%. Well, touchdown zone is 3%. And by the time it gets to the top, you can see it kind of slowly goes up to 6%. The circuit's definitely not quite standard what you would think just because of the hills and mountains it's a fairly short final and our mist is right at the river if you power up 20 degrees left hand turn out and pitching for the climb this place always has tailwinds i mean it's so rare that it doesn't usually around four knots tailwind all right there's copy him morsby 1285 november tango kilo position November Tango Kilo, Mosgad. November Tango Kilo, overhead Compium, 1-2000. Estimating Malamanda, 07. November Tango Kilo, no additional reported traffic. Call again, Secretary Malamanda, HL 6538. Malamanda, 6538, November Tango Kilo. So, oh, that's what I'm expecting. If we scroll on down here, you can see what a cool place it is. Let's head on down. A thousand feet per minute. 3,200 feet for pattern altitude. A little blue line right there is going to come right on down on top of Malamunda. That lets me know when I'm going to get to that 3,200 feet. Go heading mode now on the autopilot and make a little bit of a right hand turn just around this mountain because I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to go right through it otherwise. Uh, let's start up our checklist for landing on the buddy check. Selectors and brakes are good. Our train awareness system I just turned off. Our touchdown speed landing performance is going to be 63 knots. Mighty slow. Lights and inlet. We already talked about our abort, but it's just at the river. It's power up 20 degrees left hand turnout. Resetting ITC. This area right here is such rugged terrain. It's just unreal how rugged this terrain is. I really do feel blessed to be able to fly here in New Guinea. And I love days like this. I used to hate them, but now I gladly accept the challenge. You know, it's real fun, mostly. I love it. I go around to the right of this cloud. Well. Definitely rain showers all off here to the north and northeast of the field. Looking out more towards the west, it is looking clear. I might just be seeing rain in between the two. Not good. Yeah, that's a lot of sprinkly rain. When it gets on your, if it's just like very little, you can still see pretty well through the windshield. It's when it starts raining harder that you can't see through the windshield. I mean, I'm going 160 knots, so I don't know, what, 180, 185 miles an hour? So it feeds off pretty good. But when you get down to 63 knots, maybe 70 miles an hour, it just doesn't beat off nearly as well. Oh, really good visibility towards this way. We're not so much this way, so I'm thinking that it's going to stop raining by the time I get there. <laughs> I hope. Oh, we've got good visibility. I'm turning the train off so I can see my map. Autopilot off. Harness. And prop. Or is it 6538, November Tango Kilo in the Circa Malamunda report after landing? Tango Kilo. All right, yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, 500 foot or less clouds in this circuit. That's for sure. Although, I think I see the airstrip. 
Yeah, I think I do. All right, prop and harness is done. We've got landing clearance to go. All stations, Malamunda, Kodiak, November, Tango, Kilo, joining the circuit, Malamunda. Yes, I definitely see the runway now. It looks like there is still a bunch of clouds, but it looks like my final should work. It is still raining, though. Although it's really good visibility, though. It's not like a, a rain rain. It's just like a drizzle that's on the windshield. But I am hoping that it stops right here. It's starting to look clear and clear. But that just means it's going to be a very, very slick. Yeah, it's already starting to stop raining. Nice. Perfect. Just like that, it stopped. Just, literally just right over top of it. That's great. Yeah, final. I've got clouds on final. It looks super wet. I can see the water shimmering down there. I'm going to land at the first cone in. I'm going to go heavy reverse. That's going to help me slow down when it is slick and my brakes are not working. They say the prop only, or the reverse only, actually cuts down 5% of ground roll, but that's on a dry, paved runway, not a slippery mountain runway. Here's my 3200 for my circuit. 20 degrees of flaps. We want 63, 73, and 83. Slow into 83 here. Oh man, right on my final, right where I need to turn. I've got a whole cloud just sitting there. All right, like I said, if I, like I said, if I have to go around and power up 20 degrees, left hand turn out, resetting ITT. Actually, going to be torque. Probably max out of my torque first here. Let's just go full flaps now. Cliss is complete. Right where I need to turn, there's a cloud. We'll see how thick it is. Might be able to just wiggle my way through the holes. There's 73, we want 73 here. We'll be slowing to seven or 68 as we turn final. It's a really short final. 500. Yeah, I'm just gonna go 20 degrees and probably go around just to look at it because this is not ideal. I could go through here. All right. Yeah, okay, yeah. I could probably still come through here. I'll do that. And then, yeah, okay. I've got enough room, I think, to get in here. Uh, I've definitely got enough room to get in here, so. All right, let's try this again. Now that I've figured out the route that I want to go. Okay, we've got 20 degrees of flaps. We'll just do a 180 and get right back in there with full flaps, slowing on down to... I'm gonna go 68 knots on my base, turning final. Uh, no, six, I'm just gonna go 63. I'm just gonna do my VREF all the way in just because it's gonna be a very short final. So full flaps, checklist is complete. At least it's not raining. I go through this little hole right here. Here's my 68. Starting to slow to 63. Maybe three or four above it. And I'll lose those last knots on the turn. Oh, a tiny bit low. Okay, coming up on committed. Committed. Yeah, 
that's slippery. A low idle. My goodness, this is rough. Uh, see what I mean? It's slippery. I even got off left of center line. Don't forget, go check out the link down below. Save some money on Surfshark today. Get an additional four free months. And there's no risk to try it out. 30 day money back guaranteed. See how wet the wheels are, just pushing the water. Come on, turn around. You know you want to. All right, there we go. Well, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that flight out here to Malamunda. Thank you for joining me. Like I said, if you want to get into flying, if you don't know how to fly the Kodiak and you want to learn, check out my sim course down below. Or Z6538, November Tango Kilo, on the ground, Malamunda. Cancel SAR. November Tango Kilo, Malamunda, select the link. November Tango. See you guys next time.